This Sportsnet Central update is presented by Drayton Resort and Casino. Oh, shout out to Mob Deep. Shout out to Mob Deep because the Rams are shook ones. That's right. Sean McVay and everybody in L.A. are urging Ram fans not to sell their tickets to the NFC Championship game this Sunday against the 49ers at SoFi Stadium. Of course, in Week 18, the Rams had to go to a silent count, Mully. They couldn't hear in their own stadium because the 49er faithful took over SoFi Stadium. Don't forget Laura Britt, Joe Staley, Tequila Spikes, and Dante Whitner. They'll be on pre- and post-game live Sunday. 2.30, it all starts here on NBC Sports Bay Area and immediately after the game when the Niners take on the LA Rams for a chance at a berth to the Super Bowl where they'll play either the Chiefs or the Bengals, but they got to take care of business here because McVay and company, they don't want to lose seven in a row to the 49ers, Willie. No, and look, I'm a big Sean McVay fan. I know his family. Um, but that's shown a little, little, you know, I wouldn't say weak, but a little concern about the 49ers coming down here and taking over. Right. Like they did last game. No doubt. And Sean McVay, of course, is dancing in the end zone after they went up 17 nothing. Not his finest moment, but I'm not mad at him. Not mad at him at all. And I'm especially not mad at Jonathan Kuminga. When you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And tonight, he was ready to roll. 22 points to team high off the bench. And, of course, the poster everybody's going to be talking about all night long. But I thought he let the game. I keep saying this, Bully. Letting the game come to him. They played total team basketball. And Kaminga, four for four from the three-point line. He cut. He passed. And he took advantage of the open shots here, including the corner three, which it looks like he's been working on in practice. He played very controlled tonight. Nasty. So, J.K., man, what a great overall game. And like you said, Bonte, these are all wide-open three-point shots that are created by his teammates. Eight of nine from the field. I mean, we said we said before the game, run the floor hard, right. rebound, and let your teammates create offense for you. It's exactly what he did. He just has an incredible way of, you know, making the highlight plays. Right. And ju just the talent is just incredible. I just love his progress. He's always trying to dunk on somebody, too. You notice that. Whenever Not he gets try. Back, he succeeds. He, yeah, he's for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people are comparing J.K. to this guy right here, Sean Marion. As you mentioned, Molina in the pregame show, probably should be a Hall of Famer. Career averages of 15 points a game, over uh, over eight and a half rebounds there. He was an NBA champ with the Dallas Mavericks team that beat the Miami Heat in six in 2011. Look at that, four-time NBA All-Star, NBA third team twice, and an all-rookie second team. He caught up with our very own Darrell Wright on the right corner to discuss the comparison with Jonathan Kuminga. I don't know if you know, but Coach Kerr recently name dropped you and said he sees Jonathan Kaminga uh, really being the next Sean Marion in this league, you know, and the things that he brings to the table for this Warriors team. I don't, have you heard that? And what do you think of Jonathan Kaminga's game? You know what's funny? You said that somebody else had reached out to me about the comments he made about that. You know, that's, 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 a, that's a compliment. I, I really respect it. But, you know, uh, we we always comparing players, uh, current players right now to to, to past pre players. That's that's the that's the normal thing to do to give you a picture of kind of some of the similarities they have. That's not necessarily he's gonna beat me or be anything like me, but he got he got some Sean Marion tendencies, you know, which is which is awesome. So, you know, I, I wish the young fellow a, gr a great career because I think uh, I've watched him play. I, I love his I love his energy and effort. And that's what's that's what's giving him over the hump. People, like his energy, how much he plays hard when it comes to that floor. And he's setting the tone right then and there when he step on. He's not trying to um, uh, go into the motion of the game and all that. No, he's coming there going 100% hard. And that's why he's able to do the things he's going to do on the floor because everybody else is half-assed. And he's coming in there going straight at their necks. And he's rebounding, getting, getting two and three tips. And while everybody's sitting there watching, they just thinking it's gonna fall in their lap and don't wanna go get it. He's gonna get that ball. And he's he hit a few threes, he's working on his jumper, and like, you know, he, he has a he has a neck. He just plays, he's playing hard and everybody on the floor right now. This is why he's able to separate himself. And I'm happy for the young guy. Man, those are strong comparisons right there. Sean Marion was a baller. We need to talk about the block shots he averaged per game in Phoenix. He had years where he averaged three, two and a half. He was a factor for that small ball Suns lineup. So Jonathan Kamiga, he could be 
better than Sean Marion. His, <laughs> fo his form on the shot looks better than Marion. Mar not to get on Marion because he was a baller, but Kaminga has a natural shooting motion unlike Sean Marion. And all those nice compliments from Sean Marion were pregame. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so tonight he goes out and plays under 18 minutes, gets 22 points, wow. a plus 16, 8 of 9 from the field, 4 of 4 from 3, and 5 rebounds. So wow. he's well on his way. Well, to no start doubt. him at some point in time. No doubt. And he's going to play a lot here down the stretch. Even though he's not starting, he's staying ready here. Helping out the bench. I thought Damian Lee was solid again. He's put together three to four straight consecutive games where he's playing at a nice control pace and getting the shot set is presented to him. I thought the ball was just hopping around tonight, Mully, like old Warriors basketball. Well, that's, that's when Damian Lee thrives, when that ball's moving and, and defense makes a little bit of a mistake and they don't close out to that three points. He's got that quick release. Uh, yeah, so tonight was the best ball movement I've seen in a few weeks from the Warriors. All right, it's time to mull a couple of things over here from tonight's action. Time for mulling it over with the one and only Chris Mullen. We got a couple plays here. Gary Payton is second as we get the Lighthouse crowd here getting jacked up. GP2 jumps. We've seen this before. We've seen it before. Goga, not going to happen to me. <laughs> I've seen this movie before. <laughs> Good decision. Who's that down there? That's Bullock right there. Reggie Bullock. He did watch the Pacer game. He didn't want to be like Goka Bataze. Bataze there. That was violent. I should have done what Reggie did. <laughs> should have done what Reggie did. Instead, he's going to be on TNT all night. Oh, man. It's going to be all over the highlights. Ooh. Sports Center, But TNT. you know, when you, when you play low minutes, you got to give that effort. <laughs> the, the opposing coach is watching, too. What did he do in the film room? When you know you got dunked on, and your teammates see that in the film you session. You just got to take it. You just take it. Take it. People going to crack their jokes. I mean, he wasn't going to block. It was it was kind of like fake hustle. <laughs> like I'm hustling, but I'm getting out of the way at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> time for our AT&T Fiber Fast recap. As the Warriors roll to their third straight home victory, their 4-1 on this homestand. They destroyed the Mavericks. Again, the Mavericks were 10-2 in the month of January. They had won four straight in the Bay Area against the Warriors in seven of their last eight. Well, tonight it was just not their night. Three players in double figures. Warriors had seven in double figures. Let's hear from the head coach, Steve Kerr, presented by BMW. Um, Raymond just told me that uh, Tim Hardaway broke his fifth metatarsal, and I uh, just want to uh, say how how sorry we are to hear that. I hate, I hate to see anybody get injured and, and – uh, you know, it's, it's just uh, just want to send him our regards um, from the organization, and hopefully he's uh, back. You know, sometime soon. I don't know what the prognosis is, but uh, we we feel terrible for him. Um, questions. Luca will find a way to score, but what do you think about the way your defense put the clamps on everybody else on the way to holding them to thirty five percent from the field? Yeah, the defense was active. Um, I felt like the game was tied together, you know, really well. We, we we played well at both ends. And when you play well offensively, you tend to uh, put your defense in a good position and vice versa. You know, you get stops and you get rebounds and you get out in transition and the, the offense is uh, you know, more likely to flow. So it's a really good two-way game for us and uh, feel like, you know, these last couple of weeks we've been kind of grinding and just, you know, hope, hoping to, you know, get out of the out of the mud, and it and tonight felt kind of cleansing. Like, okay, we're uh, you know we're we're right again, but we got to prove it by having another good game on Thursday. How, how positive a step was it from this kind of a balanced scoring perspective? You know, you have Clay in the lineup, but he's getting shots. Jordan is, and just you know, just the balance perspective. Yeah, the balance was great. You know, uh, Jordan as the sixth man. Uh, you know, having a really good scoring night, uh, Clay just playing a, a a Clay Thompson game. You know, just clean, um, moving the ball, uh, taking the open shots, not forcing anything, making a couple of great moves to the basket, but then um, you know moving the ball on. And uh, I thought everybody really did a good job of of just you know spacing the floor and moving it on to the next guy. And we got a lot of really good looks. Clay had like three behind the back passes and he was throwing up the the vision goggles for himself what does having him as as a facilitator and and, and a playmaker and a passer just bring to this team well he's uh you know, he's such a good shooter that um people have to honor him uh, out beyond the three-point line and he's 
you know, he's big and, and, and strong, so he can get into the paint um, and get by people, especially when they're closing out on him. Um, so he can attack that close out and um, with the floor spaced and him finding people uh, just makes the game a lot easier. See, uh, Steph seemed to work inside out tonight rather than outside in. Did you see that? Was that something he did different or was that the plan or did it just the flow of the game? That's the plan. If Steph is no longer a three point shooter, he's just, you know, he's, we're going to, we're going to really look to get the ball to him in the paint and uh, maybe be- turn him into a back to the basket player. But he was, you know, he was, he honed in on his mid range game yeah. and then he yeah. kind of pulled out a little bit. He's been great. Um, you know, the last few games I said it, um, you know, the other day, he's, he's actually playing really well. The three-point shot hasn't been going in, but um, he's he's making mid-range shots. He's, uh, he's getting the ball into the paint. He made some uh, brilliant passes. He had seven assists. Uh, and, um, you know, he rebounds so well for a guard. He's, he's doing everything for us and um, pretty encouraging that, um, you know, we can have a game like that without Steph uh, lighting it up from three. So we know that's going to come, and it's just a matter of time. But in the meantime, he's he's playing great, so we're not worried about anything. Steve, uh, Clay had a, a couple of those passes to Kaminga late in the, in the fourth. I mean, how much does Clay's playmaking that way do for you? And are you surprised those two have already clicked so so easily after not, not having much time together yet? Well, I think... Um, I think this was Clay's best game in terms of just his patience and allowing things to happen. He wasn't forcing it at all. And because the floor was spaced and, and um, we had a good flow to our game, um, you know, Jonathan was able to use his athleticism and his speed and, and free himself up. And um, you, you can see just how powerful he is as an athlete, um, how explosive and uh, it's fun to see that connection happen. And, that uh, that transition dunk was uh, just spectacular. You, um, I think, said during the TNT broadcast that you're trying to avoid having Clay ride the bike for such long uh, stints at a time, and you did kind of change up his ro- his yeah. rotation. What what are you guys looking to do with with those minutes in rotation moving forward? Um, we're just trying to avoid having him. Um, you know, not play for 45 minutes of actual time. Uh, so uh, tonight we we just had him play the first six minutes of the first and second quarters. And um, I, I felt like there was a better rhythm to it. Um, you know, his minutes restriction was, was moved up to about 25. So second half we were planning on maybe – you know, three shorter runs, but because the game was in control, we we decided to let him go so he could uh, just you know find his rhythm and keep keep playing. And so we'll just uh, we'll just try to do a better job of um, you know helping him find his rhythm uh, by playing him in in shorter spurts, but with fewer long breaks. And quick follow up, I'm assuming his. All right, that was the head coach of the Warriors, Steve Kerr. As we welcome everybody back. To Warriors Live, presented by Toyota Live at the Gay House, just outside of Chase Center. Before we get to our injury alert, I thought he said about Clay Thompson, he played with patience. Maybe the most patience he's played with all season long. And now the minutes restriction is bumped up to 25, so doesn't want him on the bike for too long. We saw him start the second quarter alongside Steph Curry. That's when the Warriors League took off. You know, I think it's also Clay getting used to playing, you know, from 20 to 22 to 24, tonight, tonight 26. And not trying to do too much, not right. trying to put a full game into those minutes. So he looked much more patient. Uh, it helps when the ball's moving, not just from Clay, but from everyone on the floor. In turn, he was six for 12, three for five from three. I love the six assists. Yep. So he's creating off the dribble, as Steve said. So Steph was getting two point shots because of the defense overextended three point line. Clay, with his big body, he has the ability to get in there. He can just back down and post right. up or if he wants to drive it uh, and make plays for his teammates. So a lot of, a lot of um, opportunities for these guys because of their reputations of big-time three-point shooters. Warriors approved a 22-4 at home, but our injury alert from today. Unfortunately, we had Senior on the pregame show. We'll have something after the break on him. But Tim Hardaway Jr., who was really playing some good basketball early on in his game, played 10 minutes, 10 points, left with a fracture in his left foot. 
injury occurred right there when he drove to the hoop for a layup, and we saw it right away. Couldn't put any weight on it, so unfortunate break for Tim Hardaway Jr. Terrible, terrible news. Uh, I went and saw Tim before I came up here to the studio. He's in good spirits. Um, you know, have it looked at by the doctor. May may have surgery, uh, so it's not a you know long debil debilitating injury, but it's something that's going to be a little while, probably for the rest of the season. Uh, but he was in good spirits, and just just always terrible news. He looked like he was finding his rhythm tonight yeah. too, you know. So uh, terrible news, but he'll be he'll bounce back.